welcome to bsc statistics students in this class i explain fisher index is an ideal index fisher index number is an ideal index number we have discussed the, the criteria of a good index number and which we have specified that which index satisfies maximum test so the, the index number is called ideal index number good index number good index number so now what we are specifying that now we have to prove the fisher index number is an ideal index number for which we have to discuss about the mathematical test which index satisfies more maximum or more ma uh, mathematical test that is called a uh, good index number now you see fisher index formula R write the fisher index formula p0 i fisher for the current time period i based on the base period 0 the price index number fisher price index formula for the current year i i am specifying now i am writing the formula it is a geometric mean of last year and pashi i am only writing the formula not 100 because to prove the mathematical test summation p i j q naught j divided by summation p naught j q naught j this is last year and summation p i j q i j divided by summation p naught j q i j this is la pashi so fisher index number is this square root of summation p i j q naught j by summation p naught j q naught j into summation p i j q i j by summation p naught j q naught q i j now we see the first one first uh, mathematical test unit test obviously fisher index satisfies the unit test that is fisher index satisfies first one unit test now we have to check the second one that is uh, time reversal test i am i am uh, uh, checking whether uh, how many number of tests are satisfied by the fisher index time reversal test for which what you have to do you have to consider p0 if is already there i have written the formula now i consider i have to interchange the two time periods uh, 0 with i and i with 0 that is p i 0 fisher and then you have to multiply you should get one so the right i am doing here interchanging the time periods i with 0 that is p not j q not j q i j divided by summation p not j it is p i j q not j q i j similarly do the do this one as well summation p i j that is p not j q i j q not j divided by summation p not j p i j q i j q not j now you have to multiply these two p 0 i fisher multiplied by p i 0 fisher is it able to oh, is it to right is equivalent to be now this is p 0 i fisher this is p i 0 fisher we have changed the time period interchange the time period 0 and i now if you calculate this it is the square root of these four important values the points formula summation p i j q not j divided by summation p not j q not j multiplied by summation p i j q i j divided by summation p not j q i j multiplied by this is first one second one this is summation p not j q q i j divided by summation p i j q i j multiplied by summation p not j q 
क्यू नॉट जे डिवाइड बाय समेशन पी आई जे क्यू नॉट जे नवी सी दाल इज पी आई जे क्यू नॉट जे पी आई जे क्यू नॉट जे पी आई जे क्यू आई जे समेशन पी आई जे क्यू आई जे पी नॉट जे क्यू आई जे समेशन पी नॉट जे क्यू आई जे Summation P not J Q not J summation P not J Q not J. It all get cancelled and the value is equal to one. Therefore, what is one? P zero I into P I zero is equal to be one. Therefore, Fisher index satisfies time reversal test. So to to satisfy time reversal time reversal test, we have to prove that P I zero and P not I that is P not I into P I zero is equal to be one. Even though if you interchange the two time periods, it should give the it should give the consistent result. That is what the uh, statement given by the Fisher. So therefore, P zero I into P I zero is equal to one if we flow it. Our reciprocal. This is the reciprocal of this is equal to the reciprocal of this. Or this is equal to the reciprocal of this. If you want, if you uh, you have to prove that this is this was proved. Therefore. Fisher index satisfies time reversal test. So Fisher index satisfies unit test, time reversal test, and the third one we see factor reversal test. I consider the factor third one factor reversal test. What is factor reversal test? We have to consider P zero I. That is. Uh, Price index number as well as quantity index number, and if you multiply these two, it should not get give the inconsistent results, and it should give the true value. If you in if you change the two ta two items, the which we which means uh, in the sense that uh, the prices and quantities, uh, then it should get the true value. That is the factor reversal test. That is uh, P zero I Fisher. Already we have considered here P zero I Fisher, and uh, this is what P zero I Fisher, and now I consider uh, P I zero Fisher, P I zero, uh, not P I zero, Q zero I Fisher, quantity index number Q zero I Fisher. The Q zero I Fisher formula I specify here because already we have considered P zero I Fisher under the square root of uh, summation. Q I J P not J divided by summation Q not J P not J multiplied by summation Q I J P I J is it clear? Yeah. So divided by summation Q not J P I J. This is what the formula of Q zero I Fisher. I write uh, P zero I Fisher formula as well. P zero I Fisher formula is Summation P I J Q not J divided by summation P not J Q not J multiplied by summation P I J Q I J divided by summation P not J Q I J. This is the formula of P zero I Fisher. This is the formula of Q zero I Fisher. Now you have to multiply these two. And we have to prove that uh, is the true value. If you get it, then it is satisfied. It satisfies the factor reversal test. P zero I Fisher into Q zero I Fisher. It is equivalent to be. Now I am taking in one square root. If you take in one particular square root, first of all P zero I Fisher summation P I J Q not J divided by summation. P not J Q not J into summation P I J Q I J divided by summation P not J Q I J. First formula now multiplied by the second one Q zero I Fisher quantity index number summation Q I J P not J divided by summation Q not J P not J multiplied by summation Q I J P I J divided by summation Q not J P I J. These are the formulas which we have for price and quantity index numbers of Fisher. Now you see which terms will get cancelled. P I J Q not J P 
PIJ Q naught J. Summation PIJ Q naught J cancelled. Summation P naught J Q I J. P naught J Q I J. Get cancelled. Remaining values are summation P I J Q I J. Summation P I J Q I J. Summation P naught J Q naught J. Summation P naught J Q naught J. Therefore, under square root, whole square. Therefore, if you take the outside of the square root, then it will be summation P I J Q I J divided by summation P naught J Q naught J. This is nothing but value based index number. This is the true value. The prices in the current year, quantities in the current year, summation. Prices in the base year, quantities in the base year, summation. Summation P naught J Q naught J, summation P I J Q I J, which is nothing but true value. That is value based index number, value index number. Therefore, P0 I Fisher is equal to Q0 I Fisher is equal to V, value index number. That is summation P I J Q I J by summation P naught J Q naught J. Therefore, uh, it satisfies, Fisher index satisfies factor reversal test. The Fisher index satisfies time re unit test, time reversal test and factor reversal test. But of course, Fisher index number does not satisfy circular test. But even then, out of four, uh, time reversal test is one such uh, test in the circular test. Circular test is an extension of time reversal test. Even though circular test uh, not satisfied by the Fisher, Fisher index satisfies uh, one of the form of the circular test is called time reversal test. It is also time rever uh, reversing the time, changing the time, interchanging the time periods. Factor reversal test is also interchanging the uh, time periods. So therefore, uh, this, the, these two are two similar tests. But even then, out of four tests, Fisher, Fisher index satisfies three tests. What are those? Unit test, time reversal test and unit test, time reversal test and factor reversal test. Therefore, Fisher index, we can specify Fisher index is an ideal index. Our statement, we can justify our statement that Fisher index is an ideal index number. If you prove these, these two and unit test obviously it is true and so that uh, by taking these three, the Fisher index satisfies, is an Fisher index can be specified as an ideal index number. Thank you. Thank you so much.